Now we're in the back of the house down here in the unheated storage area. This is a great spot for like putting snow blowers and lawnmowers, that type of thing. We've installed some great cabinets in the back. We have some hanging area. So what we're doing right now is creating a transition between our interior paver uh, flooring and the outside natural stone patio that we're going to have. So to create that transition, we've laid in a set of papers and we're also going to be using some natural thin cut, thin veneer, one inch stone on top of our foundation area here. Now to set this stone, we're going to be using a prepackaged mortar. All we have to do is add water, we're all set to go. Now the one we're using is a sand topping mix with a compressive strength of more than 5,000 pounds per square inch after 28 days. Now to stir it up, I like to add the mix to the water using a paddle and a half inch drill. You just kind of stir it to the right consistency, it's all set to go. Now there's a couple of different ways of applying the concrete to the stone. One is you can apply a little bit to the back of the stone and then put some on the surface, put the two together, level it out. What I like to do in a situation like this is just basically lay out your mud bed to about the right height, set the stone in place. If you don't have quite enough, pull this back up, add some more, or get it in position, kind of knock everything in to right where you want it, clean off the excess, and you keep moving on. Now one thing you want to remember is to try to get these fairly flat to each other, obviously, but also I'm keeping a, a certain slant going from the threshold out to the grass. You want to maintain that. And the thing is, if, if it looks like you're getting off a little bit, you know, go ahead and pop one up because you have about 30 minutes work time uh, in the whole process here. Now you have some leeway on how big you want to make the joints in between the stones. We're trying to mimic what we have on the rest of the house. And again, there's a couple ways you can go about this. You can strike the concrete as you go to the level you want, or you can go back and fill in, uh, even with a grout bag, later on to get the exact height you're looking for. And don't worry if you get a little masonry on the top. Try to be as clean as possible, but you can always use a masonry cleaner just to clean everything off at the very end. Okay, well all this is looking very nice. Now what we want to do is continue this look all the way out to the grass. So to do that, we're going to be using natural stone because now we're beyond our footing, we're in the natural soil. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to dig out this soil down to a level so we can accommodate some base, a little bit of sand on top of that base, and then our full size stone will sit on top at a level right here that ramps down to the grass. Now you can see we've got a pretty good start on our patio in front of our double doors here. Now like Dean said, this is a natural product, same stuff that we have on the side of the house, so it's going to vary a little bit in terms of heights and sizes. It's not going to go down quite as easily as, say, a paver patio would. So obviously we do have our base in already, and the sand that we have down is not really meant to be kind of a smooth one-inch bed of sand. Really what we're using it for is to make sure that each of these pieces are nice and level. It takes some trial and error to make sure each of these pieces fit, and then we'll take away or add a little bit of sand to make sure that they're lying flat. Now the layout is going to be pretty random because of the different sizes that we're working with, but we are trying to make the joints between them as uniform as possible. Well, we have a stockpile of stone over to the side here. Typically we're just either grabbing a stone or we're loading them up in wheelbarrows, taking them over there, spreading them out, and then that way we can pick the stones as we go along. We started up next to the house and then worked our way out from there. Now the key was to make sure that we didn't get too far ahead of ourselves and then end up having to make some big cuts to make everything fit. Well, that being said, we are not afraid to fire up the beast when we need to make some cuts. Now, you might think that that's a name that Wes or Bucky came up with, but actually, that is our wet saw. It's the kind of thing you'd use for cutting large format stone or ceramic tile with a 10-inch blade and 15-amp motor. That means it's pretty well set up for cutting paver-sized stone as well. It'll do plunge cuts, which is great for inside corners, and we have an extension on the table for cutting tile up to 24 inches square. Now this being natural stone, the edges of course are rough and uneven. So if you were to put this cut piece in here, it might look kind of weird. So with proper eye protection of course, we're just going to take our stone hammer and just chisel away at the edges to rough it up a little oh. bit. Oh, ho, ho. Now this is a natural stone, so you got to be careful that you don't knock off more than you mean to. Let me get a different piece. 
And once you get that piece cut and chipped and put in place, that cut edge should be pretty well disguised. Well, that should give you an idea of how you can lay one of these patios. Actually, it's kind of fun finding just the right piece. We do have a little more work to do, and then we'll be all done.